When we subtract decimals, we, again, use the same rule as you do with addition, is that you want to line up the decimals. So I have 7 and 32 hundredths, and I'm going to subtract 1 and 61 hundredths. So the decimals have to be lined up. There's your 1 and 61 hundredths. Okay, now, when I subtract, I have two things I have to worry about. First of all, the line up, and then secondly, the actual subtraction. So we'll be careful about some of the borrowing that we may have to do. Okay, 2 minus 1, I like that, no borrowing, is your 1. And then 6 from 3, I'm going to have to do some borrowing. So I'm going to come over to the 7, make it a 6, which makes that a 16, a 13, excuse me. 13 minus the 6 is 7, and again, your decimal is going to drop straight down, and then 6 minus 1 is 5. So it's 5 and 71 hundredths. Okay, let's look at it in a problem that has a few more digits in the problem. A 19 and 653 thousandths, 19 decimal point, 653 thousandths. When I'm going to subtract, remember, line up your decimals. So the decimal goes directly underneath. I got a 9 and 6 tenths. And remember, add or subtract, I want to always fill in my zeros, just because I always want to see them lined up. So now I can go ahead and subtract. 3 minus 0 is 3. 5 minus 0 is 5. 6 minus 6 is 0. Decimal drops straight down, 9 minus 9, and 1 minus 0. So it's 10 and 53 thousandths. Okay, now I want to subtract using a whole number. Remember, just like a sentence, the period is at the end of a sentence. The decimal is at the end of a number. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to put the 19 with the decimal point right at the end. Looking at the next number, I've got to line up my decimals. So I put my 9 and the 6,532 ten thousandths goes below. Okay, now remember, I always want to add the zeros just to make sure everything's lined up. So I'm going to add a 0, a 0, a 0, and a 0. Now, everybody hates zeros. So let me show you a shortcut method. Okay, 2 from 0, I know that I cannot do that. So I'm going to go next door, whew, until I finally find a number that I can borrow from. I'm going to just pretend like that decimal is not there for right now. I'm looking at this as a 9,000. When I borrow 1 from 9,000, I have 8,999. And that brings my 10 over to add to the 0 to make it a 10. Now I can subtract, and all my borrowing is done right now. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 3 is 6. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 6 is 3. Drop that decimal straight down. And 18 minus 9 is 9. So my answer is 9 and 3,468 ten thousandths. Okay, one more example. I'm going to line up the decimal points. So I have 26 and 65 hundredths. I'm going to subtract the 9 and 683 thousandths. Again, Fill in any zeros, because you definitely want to make sure it's all lined up. Okay, so once again, I'm going to have to do some borrowing. Okay, 3 from 0, I can't do it. I go next door, and I have something I can borrow from. Makes this a 10, minus 3 is 7. 8 from 4, can't do it. So I'm going to come next door, makes this a 5, comes over as a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 6 from 5, oh my goodness, did I take a bad problem. I'm going to have to come next door to borrow 
and that makes that 15 minus 9, I'm sorry, minus 6 is 9. Decimal comes straight down, and then 5 from minus 9, can't do it. So I come next door, and I have 15 minus 9 is 6, and then 1 minus the nothing, and you could have put a 0 in there to make sure things are lined up and that you don't lose that last column. So my answer is 16 and 967 thousandths.